oligosaccharides are carbohydrates with three to three or more monosaccharides unit. Okay, so we have trisaccharides, which contains three monosaccharide, also tetrasaccharide, which contains four monosaccharide. Okay, example of this natural naturally occurring oligosaccharides are raffinose. Ang kanyang monomer ay galactose, fructose, ay, glucose and fructose, and stachyose, which is composed of two galactose, a glucose, and a fructose. Okay, these two could be found in onions, cabbages, broccoli, okay, whole wheat, and bean. Okay. So, this raffinose and stachyose needs enzyme so that it could be digested by human body. However, we lack enzyme. That's why once we eat this vegetable, okay, they cause flatulence or discomfort because once they are passed into our large intestine, the bacteria could not actually act upon them. Okay, because they remain unmetabolized. Okay. So, we also have another oligosaccharide in the form of solanin. This could be found in potato. And solanin acts as a defense against insects and predators for the potato. Okay. A small amount of solanin is not dangerous. For the human, however, syempre, when it comes to insects and predators, uh, it would be um, potent or if um, it would kill rather the insects. Kasi defense mechanism nga siya ng potato. Pero kapag human na, hindi naman na dangerous. Okay? Excessive solanin when present in potatoes are actually making the potatoes bitter. And once you improperly store the potatoes wherein you expose it to sunlight, the solanin and the chlorophyll will increase. That's why if, if improper storing of potatoes, usually nag-green siya kasi tumataas na yung solanin and chlorophyll content niya. However, do not worry because the solanin and chlorophyll could actually be reduced through uh, deep frying. Okay, pwede rin din ng boiling pero hindi daw niya masyadong marireduce. Okay, so deep frying ang magre-reduce ng solanin and chlorophyll levels. Okay, we have also oligosaccharides associated in blood types. So we all know that human blood could be categorized or into four, categorized into four types. We have type A, B, A, B, and O. So... Oligosaccharides play an important role for these blood types because, um, because it serves as a bio biochemical markers. Okay, oligosaccharides daw yung mga biochemical markers sa ating mga blood type. Okay, let's review this chart. So we all know that type A could only donate. For type A and AB. For those type B, they could only donate to, of course, recipient B and AB. For AB naman, they could only donate dun sa kaparehas nilang AB. And type O could donate to anyone. Okay? Type AB actually could receive from anyone. Okay. Bakit kaya ganun? Because of the oligosaccharide present in those different blood types. Okay. Ano ba yung mga oligosaccharide markers natin na yan? We have galactose. It is attached to N-acetylglucosamine. So, this is an amino sugar. A galactose again and a fucose. Okay. What differentiate one blood type from another is that the fifth marker. Okay, ano daw ba yung, so may apat na tayong marker dito, no? Galactose and acetylglucosamine, another galactose and a fucose. For it to be classified daw as type O, 
there should be no fifth marker. For type A naman, the fifth marker should be N-acetyl galactosamine. And for the type B, the fifth marker should be ah, type B, the fifth marker should be galactose. So, paano to? And type AB will have both, will contain both type A and B. So, this one. If this is the red blood cell of type A, okay, so it has this galactose. Ito yung common sa kanila. So, you have still an acetyl glucosamine, and then you have another galactose, and this is fucose. So, ito yung apat na magkakapareha for all types of blood. Naka-attach yan sa KRBC. Now, sabi ko kanina, what differentiate one type from the other is the existence of the fifth marker. The fifth marker will be attached to that second galactose ito. Second galactose. Okay, so for type A, the second, uh, the fifth marker would be an, an N-acetyl galactosamine. For type B, the fifth marker is a galactose. For type O, there's no fifth marker. And for type A and B, both type A and B are attached in that um, red blood cell. Okay, so ito rin yung dahilan kung bakit ang type O ang universal donor. Kasi kung magdodonate siya nitong itong biochemical marker na to, eventually nandun lang din naman sa mga ibang types. So wala siyang dinodonate na bago, kaya compatible siya sa lahat. Now, for type A and B, bakit hindi pwedeng mag-donate ang type A sa type B? Kasi nga, the fifth marker in type A is different from type B. So, may, may mismatch na. Okay? Bakit universal receiver naman ang type A and B? Kasi lahat ito ay meron sa kanya. Okay? So, that's the importance of oligosaccharides in uh, our blood type. Now, we have polysaccharides. When we say polysaccharides, so it could no longer be until 1 to 10, okay? Na monosaccharide units. Rather, dito ay madaming madami ng monosaccharide units. This could actually come, this could actually um, reach hundreds until thousands or millions of units of this monosaccharide. That's why it is known as polysaccharide. Other term for polysaccharide is glycans. Okay? We have different types that will distinguish glycans from the other. Okay? It depends on the identity of the monosaccharide. If the identity is only of one type, so iisa lang daw siya, kunyari kung puro glucose, okay, puro glucose, glucose yan, lahat yan, glucose na nag, uh, nag connected with a glycosidic linkage, ang tawag daw natin dyan ay homopolysaccharide. Homo means one because the monomer unit of that polysaccharide is only of one type. Okay? If there are two or more, two or more monosaccharide, okay, so we call them heteropolysaccharide. Example of homopolysaccharides are starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. While as for heteropolysaccharide, examples would be hyaluronic acid and heparin. We're going to discuss this later. More properties nila. Okay. Another parameter that could distinguish one polysaccharide from the other are the length of the polymer chain. So, yung iba hanggang hundreds lang, yung iba umaabot ng thousands, yung iba umaabot ng millions. Okay? So, there would be short chain and there would always be long chain polysaccharide. Also, the type of glycosidic linkages between the monomer unit na discuss natin dun sa disaccharides, we have different type of glycosidic linkage. We have alpha 1 to 4, meron din tayong beta 1 to 4, 
Okay? Meron din tayong alpha, beta, 1 to 2. Okay? So, maraming klase ng glycosidic linkage that could be found for these polysaccharides. We also have the degree of branching. So, meron yung straight chain polysaccharides. So, if this is, sorry, if this represents one monomer or mo, one monosaccharide, meron yung straight chain lang ang kanilang arrangement. Meron din din namang branch. So, may mga branching na nangyayari. So, it could either be straight or branched. Okay, so that defines a polysaccharide. So, itong example nito. So, this is just a straight one with the same unit. So, therefore, this is an unbranched chain homopolysaccharide. While this one is a branched chain, kasi yan, nag-branch out na siya, may branching na nangyayari. But still, it is composed of the same or one type of monosaccharide so therefore this is a branch chain homopolysaccharide while as okay so meron tayong and branch chain of hetero hetero kasi magkakaiba na yung monosaccharide units niya but still they are arranged in a continuous chain or straight chain so therefore that's unbranched we also have branch chain that is hetero Okay, so the, the one that connects this one monosaccharide from the other is known as the glycosidic linkage. Okay, properties of this polysaccharide, they are not sweet. So unlike the sugars, uh, unlike the monosaccharides and the disaccharides that could be classified as sweet, pag polysaccharide, hindi na daw siya sweet. They are negative in Tollens test and Benedict's solution. Because they are non-reducing. Bakit non-reducing? Kasi nga, all the hemiacetal carbon atom or all the anomeric carbon are involved in the glycosidic linkaging. Okay? They also have limited solubility in water. So, um, at small amount, pwede silang madissolve in water. Pero, in greater amounts, um, usually they don't dissolve. That's why... It has only limited solubility in water. Okay? We have six important polysaccharides and they are divided into two. Or into three rather. Okay? The first um, group are storage polysaccharide. The next would be structural. See. Structural. So, this is the second group. So, yung una is, sorry. So, the first is energy storage. Next is the structural polysaccharide. And the last would be the acidic polysaccharide. Okay. So, let's go back to storage storage polysaccharide okay we have two kinds for storage we have starch and glycogen this one so starch and glycogen are the storage polysaccharide okay so when you say storage polysaccharide they are stored and they would be used as an energy source in the cell. So, for the plant, the energy storage is known to be the starch. So, energy storage in plant, it is a homopolysaccharide, meaning it's only composed of one type of monosaccharide, and that is glucose as a monomer. Okay, so... The starch is stored for later use of the plant um, and it is hydrolyzed to release glucose. If starch is added to a, an iodine solution, 
you're going to develop blue to dark blue or black to dark blue coloration. Okay, so these starches are present in wheat, rice, corn, and potatoes, and so on. Okay, there are two types of polyglucose that could be isolated from the starch. We have amylose and amylopectin. So amylose is a straight chain glucose polymer in the starch. It is only of 15 to 20 percent. These amylose contain 300 to 1000 monomer or glucose units with an alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage. So an amylose will have ito yung kanyang glucose 1, another glucose, another glucose. They are connected with an alpha 1 to 4 and this glucose unit could reach until 100 until 300 to 1000. Okay? However, when you have to know the concentration of this amylose in starch, they are only of 15 to 20 percent. So, konti lang sila. Majority of the starch is composed of amylopectin. This time, this is branch glucose polymer. So, 80 to 85 percent of starch is amylopectin. The monomers are still glucose. But this time, they are unbranched and they could reach up to 100,000. The glycosidic linkage is alpha 1 to 4 and alpha 1 to 6. The branching happens every 25 to 30 glucose units. So if there are glucose units arranged and then pag naka 25 na, magbra-branching na siya. Okay? So ganun daw yung branching. So for between glucose units... Arrange in the straight one. So, ito yung alpha 1 to 4. Magbra-branch siya through alpha 1 to 6. Pero yung connections niya in a straight manner, still alpha 1 to 4. And again, branching will happen due to alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkage. Nevertheless, the repeating unit would still be glucose. That's why it is a homopolysaccharide. Now, the energy storage in the plant, uh, in the animal and human cell is now the glycogen. Okay, so still, the uh, repeating unit here is glucose. Glycogen is also known as the animal starch. Okay, the monomers could be up to 1 million. And the glycosidic linkage ay pareha sila ni amylopectin na alpha 1 to 4 and alpha 1 to 6 glycosidic linkage. Okay, however, unlike the amylopectin, glycogen is three times more branched because the branching happens 8 to 12 glucose units. So kung kanina, ang amylopectin ay branching happens every 25 to 30 glucose unit for glycogen, branching happens every 8 to 12 glucose units. Okay, the glycogen... Um, will be formed if there's an excessive glucose units in the, uh, glucose in the blood. So, pag madami na, mataas ng glucose level ng blood, okay, the body has a mechanism to convert this glucose to form glycogen. And the process is known as glycogenesis. Okay, so glycogen will be formed from the free glucose unit. So, kapag masyadong madami yung glucose, magpo-form daw sila ng polymer so that they could be stored as glycogen. Okay, and what hormone dictates the formation of glucose to glycogen is insulin. Okay, so pag mataas yung blood, ay mataas yung glucose unit sa blood, sabihin ni insulin na Okay, glucose, you form glycogen and be stored for future use. Now, if the glucose level in the blood drops, so kumonti na, due to exercising or fasting or other normal activities, yung na-stored na glycogen will be hydrolyzed. So, hydrolyzed. so remember, hydrolysis is just the reverse of the condensation reaction. So, if the stored glycogen is needed for it to, con to be converted into 
glucose kasi nga bumaba na yung glucose level. So, magbe-break na yung mga yan. Magbe-break na yan into individual monosaccharide units. And what dictates this process is the, hor the hormone glucagon. Okay? The process is known as glycogenolysis. So, ulitin natin. Glycogenesis is the process into which the glucose level will um, will link with each other. The glucose will link with each other such that glucose will lump together to form glycogen. That's glycogenesis. Glycogenolysis, on the other hand, happens when glucose level drops such that the glycogen will be hydrolyzed back to its glucose units. Okay? So, the amount of glycogen in the body is relatively small. Okay? The muscle tissue has only 1% glycogen, while as for liver tissues, could only store up to 2-3% to glycogen. Okay? So... Sufficient, but this is sufficient enough to take care of the normal activities that is demand, um, activities for 15 hours. Okay, so syempre, if you are doing strenuous exercises, the glycogen could easily be exhausted. Okay, so at this, uh, if that's, if glycogen will be depleted, the body will oxidize fat as a source of energy. So, kasi kukonti lang naman yung nai-store na glycogen in the body. So, during exercise time, at wala ng glycogen, fats will be the one to be oxidized as the source of energy. Okay? Now, the second type of polysaccharide is Sorry. Mm. We have structural polysaccharide. And we have two kinds. We have cellulose and chitin. Cellulose and chitin. What's the difference? Cellulose are homopolysaccharides per So only one type of monomer and that is glucose. They are unbranched and usually glucose unit could be up to 5,000. This time, the glycosidic linkage is beta 1 to 4. You have cottons and wood. They are composed of 95% cellulose and 50% cellulose respectively. Cellulose is actually the woody portion of the plant particularly in the stem, stalks, and trunks. Cellulose is not a source of nutrition for human body. However, we are always advised to take um, vegetables rich in fibers because uh, cellulose is also serving as a dietary fiber. Though we could we lack enzymes that will break down the cellulose such that the bacteria could um sorry since we lack enzyme to break down the cellulose this cellulose actually provides bulk um to help us move foods through our intestinal tract. Okay. However, yung mga cow, horses, and sheep, meron silang enzymes to break down the cellulose. Okay. And that is because of the bacteria that could be found in their intestinal tract. So that's why they could digest the cellulosic material. Nevertheless, kahit na hindi natin siya madigest, still they are known as the dietary fiber. Okay which is very helpful for the facilitation of the excretion of solid waste and for the absorption of water 
for us to have a softer stool and frequent bowel action. On the other hand, so si, kung si cellulose ay the structural polysaccharide for plants, chitin on the other hand is the structural polysaccharide in crabs, lobster, shrimps, insects, and other arthropod, arthropods. Okay, so chitin is a homopolysaccharide, but this time hindi na si glucose ang kanyang repeating unit. Rather si N-acetyl-D-glucosamine na ang kanyang repeating unit. Okay. So the... So derivative ang ang N acetyl glucosamine is actually a glucose derivative. So derivative lang siya ng glucose. The alpha the glycosidic linkage for chitin are beta 1 2 4. Okay? So ano ba yung mga chitins? They are actually the exoskeletons of these crabs, lobster, shrimps, insects. Okay? So once Chitin will be hydrolyzed. They are going to produce D-glucosamine. And study shows that D-glucosamine actually decreases the inflammation and pain associated with osteo osteoarthritis. Okay. The last type of polysaccharide is acidic sugar. Okay. Ah, sorry, acidic polysaccharide. For acidic polysaccharide, this actually has disaccharides as a repeating unit. So, hindi siya monosaccharide ang repeating unit niya. Rather, disaccharides ang kanyang repeating unit into which one of the disaccharides is either an amino sugar or both has a component of a sulfate or hydroxyl group. So, paano ito? We have hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a hetero polysaccharide. So, big sinabi nating hetero, may dalawang klase or more, one or more type of monosaccharide. It is unbranched. One of the disaccharide unit has a carbo, carboxyl group. Ito. So, may carboxyl group daw yung isang unit dun sa disaccharide with an alternating pattern glycosidic bond of beta 1 to 4 and beta 1 to 3. So this is the beta 1 to 4, 1 to 3 and then beta 1 to 4. So alternating daw yung kanyang glycosidic linkage for this polysaccharide and the disaccharide units could be could be 50,000 per chain, okay? Hyaluronic acid serves as a lubricants in the fluid of our or in the fluid of joints. And the jelly-like consistency of the vitreous humor in the eyes. The Greek word halos means glass. Okay, so that is hyaluronic acid. Heparin is the last type of acidic polysaccharide to be discussed. Okay, so heparin is still... And a heteropolysaccharide, still unbranched. Okay, so both of the disaccharide will contain sulfate group, and heparin acts as a an blood anticoagulant. When you say anticoagulant, this prevents the formation of clots in the blood, so that it could retard the growth of the exist, or rather, it could retard the growth of the existing clots within the blood. So. Um, it could prevent the formation of clots and it could retards it, it retards the formation of the growth of the existing clots. However, hindi niya pwedeng i-break. So, pwede lang niyang i-prevent yung formation or pwede rin din niyang pabagalin yung, yung growth ng existing clots. Pero, ang heparin ay hindi niya kayang mag-break ng existing clots once they are formed. Kaya lang niyang pabagalin. Okay. 
Now, this heparin is used okay, as an anticoagulant in the interior or exterior of external objects that come in con into contact with the blood. So, so if for example, yung, those undergoing kidney dialysis, yung mga machines done and the prosthetic implants, they are going to apply heparin para mag prevent ng formation of clots once having in contact with the human body. Okay, so yun yung mga um, pharmaceutical grade heparin. Also, the pharma these pharmaceutical grade heparin are um, coming from the intestinal lungs or tissues, intestinal, sorry, intestinal or lung tissues of the slaughtered house, uh, slaughterhouse animals like such as pigs and cows. Okay, so this is the monomer unit, the disaccharide for the heparin. So it has still carboxyl group and sulfonated daw siya. So may mga sulfur group. Okay. Okay. We also have dietary considerations of carbohydrates. Dapat off yan. So we have two types, the simple sh simple carbohydrates and the complex carbohydrates. When you say simple carbohydrates, these are dietary monosaccharides or dietary disaccharides that are usually sweet to taste and they are usually referred to as sugar. While as complex carbohydrates are still dietary polysaccharides which are not sweet and usually they are source of starch and fiber. Under simple carbohydrates, we have two types, the natural and the refined sugar. Natural meaning they are present in whole foods like milk and fruits. While as the refined, of course, they undergo processes which separates them from their plant source. Okay, so that's the discussion for carbohydrates.